we've come to our penultimate speaker and then we will have our keynote speaker after which we will have a short break and then a panel discussion. Um, our next speaker up, again, another local. We're brilliant. We're so lucky to have so many talented locals on our doorstep. Um, it's Dr. Alicia Loftus. Um, she's a local GP here in Westport, which some people might know. Studied medicine at um, NUIG and also has a certificate in plant-based nutrition from Corn Cornell University. And today she's going to talk to us about plant-based medicine, food for a healthier planet. Give it up for e Alicia, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. And you'll have to excuse my voice. I'm got a bit of laryngitis at the moment, but I'll do my best. Um, so, um, my name is Alicia, I'm a doctor here in Westport, and I have an interest in my patients being healthy, um, I do without my help, um, and one of the best ways of achieving that is through the food that we eat. So I've done a lot of reading and research the last probably year or a little bit more um, as to what the best way of achieving this is, and there's an awful lot of information out there you know, a lot of, really a lot of rubbish to sort through on the internet. It's very difficult to get good quality information. But from the reading that I've done, um, I've come to the conclusion that probably the best diet overall for our health is what we call a whole food plant-based diet. And this is, I think, touched on a little bit earlier. So this is kind of what it says on the tin, although it's generally not tinned. Um, it's eating mostly plants that have had as little as possible done to them in getting from the earth to your plate. So it's not perhaps the snappiest of titles, but it's also not as restrictive as maybe using the term vegan, which tends to define itself a bit more by what you're not allowed to eat than what you are allowed to eat. Um, so the idea is that um, it's a way of eating that's about eating whole foods that come from plants um, in as natural a form as possible. So the idea is that you get the fruits, the vegetables, the nuts, the seeds and the grains, and then you make the food out of them. So it's not a club that you're going to get kicked out of if you just can't part with a bit of butter on your toast in the morning, or if you fancy having a steak every once in a while. So I don't want anyone calling me out if you see me in a restaurant eating meat every so often. Um, but it's about small steps in the right direction, which is what today is about really. Um, it's about knowing that this is the best possible diet, not just for your health, but also for the health of the planet, and making steps towards that. So it may even be as simple as if you tend to eat meat with every dinner, that maybe once a week you'll decide to go veggie and just pick a couple of different vegetarian meals you like, and maybe over time you might expand that out to other days of the week as well. Um, so the health benefits of this way of eating are becoming increasingly clear. A whole food plant-based diet can dramatically reduce rates of cardiovascular disease, heart disease, and that's one of the biggest killers, if not the biggest killer in Ireland. It can also improve and sometimes reverse type 2 diabetes, especially in the early stages. And we see definite and clear reductions in the risk of cancer um, and also in Alzheimer's dementia and other dementias. And these are, as I say, some of the biggest causes of disease and death in this country. So it's really important to consider this way of eating. So just to give a brief overview of, um, I suppose, the nutritional benefits of this diet, because it's one of the funny ones that, it, you know, we all kind of know unconsciously or maybe consciously that it is a healthy way of eating. But people are always a little bit worried about you when you say you're not going to be eating any meat or dairy anymore. They're kind of afraid you might just suddenly start wasting away and lose all of your muscle. So I just wanted to maybe address that a little bit. Um, so the only nutrient that you need to really think about when you're on an exclusively plant-based diet, so if you're cutting out all animal products, is vitamin B12. Um, and that's an interesting one because it's actually produced by soil microorganisms, or it used to be, and it's also produced in the uh, gut bacteria of the animals that we tend to eat. And in the past, we probably got um, a reasonable amount of B12 by ingesting some soil on the carrots that we ate, for example. Um, so obviously nowadays, well, I suppose the, the first thing to say is I certainly wouldn't advocate you going out and eating a teaspoon of muck every day because the soil around us is so depleted now and so exhausted that those microorganisms may not even be there. And also we're power washing our vegetables, we're peeling them. So we're taking away a, already a source of nutrition when we do that. Um, so that's just the one thing that you do need to bear in mind if you're going down this route completely, that you will need to take a B12 supplement. Um, but apart from this, a whole food plant-based diet will provide you with everything that you need. So you will get enough calcium, you will get enough iron, and crucially, you will get enough protein. That seems to be the one that everyone's most worried about when it comes to being meat-free. Um, what we're advised to take in is that 8-10% to 10 of our total daily calories should come from protein. And a whole food plant-based diet will readily provide that. So you don't need any more than that. That, that will cover 98% of the population's needs. So the remaining 2% will be, for example, people in nursing homes or people with chronic diseases who need extra calories. It doesn't include people who are athletic, who are lifting weights or working in heavy manual labor. They'll get enough protein from this diet. Um, 
In addition, you know, some of the other benefits, I suppose, of this way of eating, plant sources of food don't have any cholesterol. And this is great because we don't need to eat any cholesterol. We do need some cholesterol in our bodies to help our brain and to help produce hormones, but our body has actually evolved to make cholesterol. So we don't need to take any of it in. And that makes an interesting point probably about what, our, what kind of food we've evolved to eat as well. Um, but we certainly don't need to be taking in animal protein or animal products for that reason. Um, and the other, I suppose, point to make, out, make about this way of eating is something that people are sometimes concerned about. Because yes, this is a high carb diet. It's a high diet that's very high in carbohydrates. But we don't actually have a problem with carbohydrates in the Western world. We have a problem with processed food. So when you look at, and this is really a no-brainer, but what you have to think about it a little bit, when you look at a pastry that you buy in the petrol station and a cup of strawberries, they actually may have the same amount of sugar. And sugar is a simple carbohydrate. But the pastry ends there, obviously. Um, whereas the strawberry has so many more benefits. It's got vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and it's got fiber. So I know which one I'm going to be recommending everyone eat. And I will judge you if you eat the pastry. <laughs> But that brings me to another benefit of the whole food plant-based diet, and that's fiber. So fiber is about a lot more than just you know something useless that we need just for roughage. And um, there are huge benefits to it, and a whole food plant-based diet is particularly high in fiber. So fiber makes us feel full sooner, which is enough of a benefit in itself in the Western world. Um, but it also may change how our blood sugar reacts to food, how we digest and absorb cholesterol, and it actually feeds our gut bacteria, which we've mentioned previously as well. And in a kind of convoluted way, that actually helps to dramatically reduce rates of bowel cancer, to reduce IBS rates, irritable bowel disease, also inflammatory bowel disease, and heart disease and diabetes. So all of these things are linked into our gut health as well. But today's conversation is also about eating locally grown food, and there are health benefits here too. Imported food, depending on how far it's travelled, has often been sprayed with preservatives and sometimes with pesticides before it's left its destination in order to get to us safely or in good condition. And there's increasing concern about the possible detrimental health impacts of these compounds. In addition, especially off-season, food has often been stored for long periods if it's coming from far away. So if we're getting an apple from New Zealand, it can have been stored in cold storage for up to nine months. And by the time we eat it, we'll have lost 70% of its vitamin C. So I think it's pretty clear about the, the nutritional benefits of eating locally. But apart from that, we also need to look at what we call the psychosocial health impacts of how we eat. This is our psychological well-being and our social health. And I think that when we lose the ability or the inclination to grow our own food, we start to lose our connection to our community and to the land around us. And I know that that has detrimental health impacts because I see it every day. I see people coming in to our clinic who are anxious and stressed and, and feel isolated. And I know there are lots of different factors in modern life that are feeding into that, but I feel like part of it is because we are losing our, our connectedness with each other and with the land. Um, that's kind of a part of who we are, because in Ireland, land and community are a part of, almost part of our DNA. So I think that in terms of small steps in the right direction, I really believe that if we can start growing and eating food in a way that protects and that enriches our health and the health of the world around us, if we can start building relationships with the flesh and blood human beings that are in this room and that are in our communities and over the wall, and if we could start uh, growing our own food and sharing food we've made with our friends and neighbours and families, I think we could start to reclaim not just our physical health, but also that sense of you know, togetherness, of fulfilment, of unity and of kinship that is so important to the future for all of us. Thank you very much.